Cosmic Flows 3 program is now running smoothly. But until now, the new data only concerned the Northern Hemisphere. How to read a map if half of it is missing? Donc quand on observe le ciel du nord, on voit que la moitié de l'univers, et puis quand on observe le ciel du sud, on voit l'autre moitié de l'univers. Or, notre galaxie et les galaxies qui nous entourent se déplacent dans une direction qui est visible que dans l'hémisphère sud. C'est la direction du grand attracteur. The Great Attractor is the region with the most highly concentrated mass in Laniakea, the one that attracts galaxies in our supercluster which partially explains the speed of 630 kilometers per second of our Milky Way in space. This great attractor was revealed in the late 1980s, but remains poorly mapped because it is situated in an area that is very complicated to observe. Il y a une spécialiste en Afrique du Sud qui a fait toute sa carrière sur identifier ce que c'est que le grand attracteur. Elle s'appelle René Crane-Corteveg. Cette spécialiste a aussi trouvé un autre objet, peut-être un plus grand grand attracteur, qui est beaucoup plus loin que le grand attracteur, mais qui est toujours localisé dans cette région qui est très intéressante, très difficile à observer. Pour les cosmographes de Cosmic Flows team, it's crucial to find out more about this enigmatic super great attractor. They must head off on another trip to South Africa. There are two issues at stake. To find the best instruments to observe the new spiral galaxies from the Southern Hemisphere, and develop a closer collaboration with René Kron Kortevig. Once again, Hélène is the group's envoy. She knows her name well and enjoys discovering the techniques, opening the way for explorations to come. Here in the middle of the desert is a decisive tool for the program. A tool that is still being developed, which both scientists have come to test. The Meerkat is a new type of radio telescope assembled in the Karoo Desert. With its 64 antennas of 15 meters each, the Meerkat is like a super GBT, even more precise. This holds great promise, and it's an African country deploying it. So these 64 antennas, they are working as one big instrument, actually. It will be the most uh, powerful telescope, the most sensitive that you get until the very big SKA comes along particularly for the research area and that we are doing, mapping galaxies and mapping their gas content and seeing where they are. This is a very powerful radio telescope. René is always searching for a new instrument, a more efficient one, a more precise one, because she's an explorer of a part of space that resists observation. An entire side of sky that's hidden by our own galaxy, the Milky Way. We see the Milky Way as a beautiful thing, most people study it, but in our own Milky Way we have millions and billions of stars, so at the densest part they just cover the sky completely and we cannot see through, and so we cannot gather the light from the objects that lie behind the plane of our Milky Way. And in the optical that's about 20 degrees on the skies in a circle that we actually cannot map. Sure enough, from the Earth, our vision of space is partially truncated. Because a densely starred strip stretches out in the night and stops us from seeing what's behind it. So an entire part of the extragalactic world is eclipsed. Observation is so difficult that the area is named the zone of avoidance. For decades, using the largest optical telescope in Africa, SALT, René contributed to the tracking of the Great Attractor, located very close to the zone of avoidance. But her meticulous work led her to a brand new discovery, a great concentration of yet unknown galaxies. A supercluster 
situated in line with the constellation of Vela, well beyond the Great Attractor. And with the data that we have so far, it looks like a supercluster that is slowly starting to form. We could see two walls that are merging together and its core is actually absolutely in the center of the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. And we also found that we have lots of clumps and clusters in there, but they don't seem to be very massive clusters yet. So I think they're also mm -hmm. still forming. So we think it's a young supercluster in formation. And that's why it's actually quite extended. So it actually pulls us because if you calculate the mass, then it shows that it actually can pull us. Hélène and René will test the Meerkat by observing primarily behind the constellation of Vela, the sails of the Argo Navis constellation. Because it's in this direction that the great attractor can be found, and also the enigmatic structure which René simply named Vela. The Vela supercluster could contain hundreds of thousands of galaxies like ours. According to René's maps, this might even be one of the largest ever found. This means it is well worth venturing in this zone of avoidance and finally seeing Vela reveal. I mean, I think it's a certain challenge in a sense that um, we are scientists, we do, we do research and, and when I talk to my students I always compare it to like we're a little bit like detectives, you know, it's like a detective story. You have some pieces of the puzzle that fit but not completely. So you actually want to understand and make everything work together and actually also prove that the science that we are employing is 100% correct, that we understand it correctly. So yes, you try to put with little pieces, you try to complete that puzzle as best as possible. Thanks to René, the sky in the south reveals part of its mystery. A new supercluster looms out in the universe masked by our Milky Way, Vela. The Cosmic Flows program has found a new piece to fit the great puzzle on the new map. Perhaps a decisive one to describe the main structures? Meanwhile, the team must continue to explore within the Southern Hemisphere.